Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to yet another episode, another installment of It's Me Speaking to You. I am, as always, always your ever-faithful host, Mr. Jeffrey Wilson, coming to you live and direct from the gateway to the West, St. Louis, Missouri. And today, folks, I have somebody I've been a big fan of for a very long time, dating back to the old school SmackDown days. Man, this guy's story is quite inspirational, and I was quite fortunate a couple years ago to meet this gentleman at a sports camp that my daughter also attends. This guy has been a former WWE superstar, and most recently, and most notably, was an American Ninja Warrior contestant. Man, watching this cat perform in both of those genres is absolutely amazing. He is an inspiration, folks. He has taken the time. He's on his way to another, I believe, an indie show where he does his thing almost every weekend, probably. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Zach Gowan is joining us today. How are you, sir? Jeff, doing well, man. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, man. Thank you for taking the time, brother. Like I said, I think I was so thankful and was really stoked to have met you a couple years ago, got a picture with you. Um, like I said, man, you have a very, very inspirational story. Um, a lot of ups and downs, my brother. Um, starting, you know, I guess back in the day, man, talk to us about your cancer diagnosis um, at a very early age, which led to you losing your leg, sir. Talk to me about that a little bit. Well, that's what it's all about. Um, you can't, for me, I, I truly believe that you can't have the ups without the downs. Um, and the downs kind of prepare us for the ups in life. And the, uh, and the problem with life, and this is what I've, this is kind of what I've come to believe that the problem with life is that people think they should be immune to the downs. Hmm. So when the downs happen, uh, the response isn't always the best. Um, and certainly, you know, in my case, the response hasn't been the best, but the ability to learn from that, move forward, um, and the ability to ask for help and, uh, and humbly receive it is probably probably my greatest attribute. Uh, but yeah, so what makes my story interesting is the fact that at eight years old I was diagnosed with cancer, uh, and in order to save my life they had to amputate my left leg. And uh, while I'm grateful they did that, and I'm grateful to be talking to you 25 years later, cancer free. Uh, you know that wasn't always the case. It was thank you. It was uh, it was very difficult growing up without a leg, feeling different. Um, and now the other boys and girls not being able to run and keep up with them playing sports and all that. Um, so I found an escape and I found a solution for my internal condition through, uh, of all things, professional wrestling, more mm -hmm. specifically WWE wrestling. And uh, I fell in love with WWE at a very young age. Uh, and it turned into an obsession. And uh, when I became of age, 18 years old, I, uh, I joined a wrestling school. And thankfully, they didn't laugh at me. They didn't kick me out. They saw some potential in me. My trainer did. And uh, at 18 years old, I became the world's first one-legged professional wrestler. At 19 years old, I signed a contract with WWE, as you alluded to earlier. And, uh, I was featured on SmackDown and pay-per-views, working with Hulk Hogan, Vince McMahon, Big Show, uh, Hot Rock, Rod, Marty Plant. You Rock know. Lesnar. Yeah. yeah. So wait a minute. You, you, went from, you went from training to WWE within a year? Yeah, it well, less than a year. It happened super quick. I think seven months after my first match is when they offered me a contract, uh, uh, which is which is unheard of, you know. Uh, but they saw the, uh, the the instant marketability in in my condition, um, and, uh, and and so they they picked me up uh, very very quickly. Well, and you know, like I said, I watched that back in the day, bro. And I've been a professional wrestling fan. I think I'm a little bit older, so I mean, I guess I go back to even you know the territory days, et cetera. Um, you you know watching that it was it was very interesting man because um it seemed to me what what was what was the impression of the boys um obviously you know how cool were they with the whole thing uh everybody treated me really nicely yeah everybody was uh super warm and welcoming and uh they were they they offered their experience and they offered you know to share that with me which uh, I'm really really grateful for now I, I work with a lot of like not only guys that that are great, but I mean all time great, um, and guys that didn't have to take time out to uh, try to help me, but uh, but they did. And uh, you know, looking back with a little, a little bit of maturity, a little bit of age, looking back, uh, I'm more grateful for that now than than I was at the time. You know, it was hard for me to kind of receive the help uh, because you know I came in with the with the I was immature. I was 19 years old. I came in with a chip on my shoulder, and I wanted to. Uh, 
you know, shake the business up. And I, and, you know, and I, and, and, and I, I've, I've done all of, all of those things, but I approached it the wrong way. I, uh, I approached it from a, from a foundation of immaturity. And so, uh, you know, I put up barriers between myself and the other guys, uh, that ultimately that led to, led to them, uh, WWE releasing me, um, because I just couldn't gel with the guys backstage so much. Uh, but it was to, from my perspective, no fault of anybody. Like nobody was a dick to me and nobody was a bully or anything like that. It was just kind of me, uh, self imploding under the pressure of, of being a WWE superstar at 19 years old, you know, losing my leg a mere 10 years before that. And, uh, really the same year, uh, I just started wrestling. So, uh, that is so, a yeah, lot. That, that is a lot. That's... Yeah. But, you know, when you go from, uh, bagging groceries at your local grocery store to being in the ring with Hulk Hogan, you know, uh, in the middle of, of putting in your two weeks notice at Joe's Produce. Right. <laughs> like, it's it's just pretty intense, man. And, uh, you know, it was a lot for me to handle it. And I made some mistakes along the way. But but uh, ultimately, that, you know, that I, I own that. And that's on me. And uh, But as far as the rest of the guys, you know, man, it, it, it's, it's a family atmosphere. It's super intense. And this is a this is a career. This is a job. I mean, I mean, a lot of guys there were, you know, thirty, thirty five, forty years old. This is, they put they put their whole life into this, and they have kids and and uh, bills to pay and things like that. So they they approach it more from a business perspective than right. I did, which was, I was I was really just kind of having fun, and hammering checks, you know, and buying cars yeah. and stuff. Like that. <laughs> yeah, I can only imagine that ride, man. Well, that's interesting you say about the bullying because you know. As somebody who's watched professional wrestling and really kind of has a little bit more of an understanding of the behind the scenes, they, it's a really there's, there's more than just men, but it's a really it's a fraternal order, it's a brotherhood and a sisterhood, it's a very tight sure. tight unit, and they really don't really kind of frown upon people who haven't paid their dues coming in, and so it, I got the perception like you know the, the term is working stiff in the business, and I saw a couple times. I mean, obviously you know you were amazing at selling selling the, the moves and stuff but like for instance like jbl i always heard he was a bully and when i would see you guys at some of your matches you know i would get the sense like man he is just really taking advantage of this kid and i felt bad so was that a misperception on my part yes yes it was uh and not to crap on your point <laughs> but no, and no. i thought too i thought uh i thought jbl i was scared of jbl coming in because i heard all the stories about what he did to the young guys but he, but he the, he couldn't have been more nice. <laughs> so it was kind of weird. It was, it, was, it was weird for me to yeah. It was weird for me to to meet him. Um, <laughs> and I I ran into him recently at a at a convention, and he was he's still sweet as ever, you know. Uh, well, but, how uh, how was it though, bro? How was it taking one of those? Pardon my language. Close lines from hell because yeah. I never took one from from JBL. Maybe that's why I'm seeing his praises because he's never hit me with. <laughs> for some reason, maybe it was Brock or something. Then I don't know. There was some magic. Yeah, there. yeah. Brock Brock gave me a, a, a real good one. Um, it, it, here's the thing: it's difficult, um, and I don't think uh, I don't think anybody went out of their way to like be stiff or to hurt me because I mean, honestly, if you hurt me you're going to end up hurting yourself. And these guys are, are, are businessmen and, and they're hip to that, you know, like I was working side by side with Vince yeah. and I was, I was Vince's project. So I was pretty untouchable in terms of like them injuring me or hitting me like super duper hard, uh, where it would cause some kind of, uh, cause me to miss the next shot or whatever it was. Well, cause like you said, um, it is a so, business relationship and you're, you know, as a dancer, as a dance, you know, duet, you're only as good as your partner and you know what I mean? Exactly. You, know, you, you make them look good. They make you look good. And it's a, it's a symbiotic business relationship. You're absolutely right. Right. Yes. But there were some, <clears throat> there were some instances where, you know, uh, I mean, I, you can't help, but have it look stiff or, uh, snug because it is considering that at the time I weighed like 150 pounds. Right. And I'm balancing on one on one leg, um, and then you have the guy who's you know 275 throwing a clothesline. He's going to throw the exact same clothesline on me as he is going to throw it on uh, JBL. Right. You know, uh, and that's just that's just the nature of the of, of the game. So what what I think people saw was my lack of size, um, and you know you can't really there's no in terms of wrestling, you you have you you work the way you work, um, and so. By that I mean you're gonna throw the exact same clothesline at me as you are at somebody who's big 
mechanically speaking. Um, now, when that when that arm and that body hits my body, it's going to look drastically different than it is, you know, when it hits JBL, who's six foot five, two seventy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so that I mean, that's just physics, and that's just right. the law of, of, of nature. But uh, but yeah, so nobody nobody I don't think anybody intentionally went out their way to hurt me. Well, that's good to know. That's good to know, quite frankly, because I at the time, man, I was I was a little hot at some. It just like I said, my misperception. I'm like, man, they're just taking advantage of this kid. But I mean, swear to God, man, you were you were just tough as nails, man. Like I said, you wouldn't have been in there if you didn't like have the skills, and you weren't you know just some kind of punching dummy. You know, you you were in there giving the boy. You you were you were giving right. yours, man. You were giving yours. Right. Well, plus I was 19, and when you're 19, you don't feel any pain anyway. Right. So like, so when I did that thing with Brock Lesnar or Joe Serena when he when he you know attempted to, to end my life in front of my mom and my brother and all that, uh, it looked devastating. Uh, but it didn't feel devastating because of all the adrenaline, you know, being young, a fresh body. So it didn't hurt. Like I wouldn't have that match now with Brock. I'd be I'd be much more nervous than than I was at 19, 20 years old. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, so, so I, I had a number of things going for me. Well, is, is he as freakishly strong? I mean, we won't get into why he's so strong. I mean, he is, he's an incredible athlete and amazing genetics, you know, despite whatever, you know, recent news, but is he as like freakishly strong and like, yeah. he, he looks like, yeah. It. yeah. Uh, a big show told me that Brock was the strongest guy he's ever been in the ring with. And the big show has been in the ring with everybody. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, so when he when he picked me, it was weird. <laughs> I was like, I was laughing to myself when he picked me up for the F five. Uh, when he F five me to the ring post the first time, uh, I was laughing because I was like, this is what it feels like to be on the back of a horse. Like you know, how, you know how you get on the back of a horse if you've ever ridden a horse before. Yeah, you can, yeah, like, yeah. Feel how sturdy they are. You can feel how strong the horse is. You know, uh, and and it it, it felt exactly as if I was on the back of a horse, uh, except this is a human being, you know, who picked me up with the greatest of these, but uh, with, with no issue at all. But he kept me perfectly safe throughout the whole match, which I'm very grateful for. And I think he is grateful for that, too, uh, considering that I, you know, I gave him my body so he could advance his career. Uh, and I think he, he understood that, and uh, I think he's grateful for that, too. Well, and that's interesting, man, because like, you know, professional wrestling, it's an, in my opinion, it's an art, you know what I mean? Not everybody can do this and they call it the ability to work. And that's what you're talking about, to be able to, the ability to make it look devastating, but like not hurting you at all. And you hear that about right. some of the greatest workers out there. I mean, like, unfortunately, in no disrespect to the dead, it was, it was not necessarily said about individuals like the ultimate warrior, like his work was a little early on or whatever, was a little bit more sloppy. His strength was, right. you know, kind of out of control and he, he was hurting people. So, and that's why, you know, a lot of people didn't want to work with him, even though, you know, he did have some, some big dollar matches, but uh, <clears throat> very interesting, man. Very interesting. So about your, like you said, kind of, kind of self implosion, which is interesting because I thought it was more. It's interesting you say like you kind of distanced yourself from everybody as opposed to anybody doing anything to you. Um, talk to me a little bit about I guess that that time you know the the self implosion time and and the release the thing you know the the things that kind of led up to you being released. Yeah, well, I mean, like I said, it was it was it was way too much too soon uh, for me to handle, you know, and uh, and through through my actions, I uh, I caused a lot of friction with me and in, in, in the office. And, and some other guys, uh, because I didn't have the tools to navigate life successfully at that time. Um, and so through different actions, rub people the wrong way, and eventually me trying to uh, kind of uh, make things better, I ended up making things worse. And I kept making mistake after mistake, and so finally they had to let me go. Wow. Well, I mean, obviously, you know, like you said about mistakes, and I, you know, I don't really look at things as like failures, like you're talking about, and they're learning opportunities. I mean, you people oftentimes, when I had this conversation on another show a couple of days ago, people oftentimes define themselves by their failures, and you know, like I said, you got to look at it as a learning process. So, and you definitely have, man. I mean, you've definitely come out the other end. I mean, have you? Have you? Is your relationship still cool with the WWE? Is there not necessarily to go back to wrestle necessarily, but are you still cool with you know the Office, Shane, or not Shane? Well, yeah, Shane and Stephanie and. Uh, Vince and Hunter. I really don't have a yeah. I don't really have a relationship with them at all, to be honest with you. Uh, I uh, wh which wh which was really surprising when I did the Ninja Warrior thing, and they really they pumped it up, and they published an article on WWE.com, and they went to their social media 
and you know Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and they really they really pushed my appearance and hyped it up, uh, which caught me out of left field because that was the first time they really acknowledged my existence in a long time. Wow! So that was yeah, so that was really surprising, and I'm really happy that did that. That got a lot of more eyeballs on me and my story, which ultimately helps me in, in, in my new ventures, you know. Uh, but uh, but I know there have been talks in the past few years. There have been angles pitched. There have been uh, just kind of discussion, ground floor discussions about me uh, coming back and, and uh, doing some things with the company, but nothing ever materialized. Uh, and, uh, I mean, that's what it is. So I would imagine those conversations will continue in the future. And really, it, who knows what's going to happen? You know, I don't have any stake um, in that happening. Um, I'm just kind of open to the whole process and, and trying to evolve into the best person I can be and help as many uh, help as many people as I can along the way. And, and you're definitely doing that, man. You're definitely doing that. We're going to get into that here in a, a little bit and some of your some of your work, you know, with children and, and things like that. Um, but you know, like any any more, you know, it's kind of about building your brand. I mean, you you definitely have a, a a cool brand, you know, of an amazing story. And like you said, you got a lot of eyeballs on you right now with the with the American Ninja Warrior. Um, I mean, I don't know. Like I said, I this is I'm certainly not your business manager, but this would be like a great a great time if you had any interest to reach out to them and you know to see. I and mean, like I said, maybe you have. I don't know. I don't know what the plans are, but that would just, that would be awesome to see you back in the fold in some capacity because it's one of those. You know, obviously not as bad, but like a Jake the Snake story. Everyone loves a good like redemption story, and like now, I mean, as I said, you've you've come so full circle and just like, you know, really out of the darkness and so really living living in the light. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Life has never been better than it is right now. Uh, You know, and and I see that, and then you see that. It's just kind of making uh, making the decision makers at WWE see it that way. Right. Uh, That's true. So, so, so what it comes down to me is I don't know. You know how much how much to push, how much to uh, sit back and let things happen, um, and it's always that balance of trying to find that. And that's what life is, you know, pretty much. So uh, right now I'm just taking it one day at a time and trying to improve uh, myself, like I said. Well, and you certainly are, man. And like I said recently, you know, in June you appeared on the American Ninja Warrior, which was amazing to see. It's on my Facebook page. Um, it's me speaking to you, as well as my personal Jeffrey Wilson page, or just go on YouTube, you. check it out, Zach Gowan. Yeah, it was amazing, bro. Amazing. Um, like I said, this is this happened more recently. You've been, you know, chilling in the light and really have had your life together for a while now. What was the impetus, man? What was the catalyst that really got that desire to? Because I remember I saw a, a, a while before you went on about how you were thinking about it and you were gonna reach out to him, and you know, obviously they did. What was that all about, man? What prompted that? Uh, just another challenge, I, don't know. I guess. Yeah, no, I don't know. I was inspired. I had a lot of coffee that day and uh, maybe a little inspiration from God or something. But I made a Facebook post talking about how I would, uh, I really want to go on the show. And then people started liking it and sharing and commenting on it, kind of gassing me up, you know. And so I'm like, yeah, let, you know, let me look into this. And I went on the website and uh, they were taking applications for this season. So I'm like, screw it. I just helped fill it out. So I filled out the application, um, submitted like a, uh, they wanted a video too, right? So I, the only, I don't, I don't have, I didn't have videos of me doing ninja obstacles. I didn't realize how deep, uh, into the culture this ninja training, um, is. I mean, people train for this year round, you know, yeah. different gyms across the country. <clears throat> and so I just showed them a video of me doing wrestling drills at the wrestling school, like hopping over the ropes, doing forward rolls, back rolls things like that, that just showed off my athleticism a little bit, and uh, and I submitted it and kind of forgot about it, uh, and then they called me up, and, and they said they wanted more footage of me doing actual ninja obstacles, so I so I did a quick Google search of local ninja gyms, and I found one about 15 minutes from my house, I showed up there, uh, paid the fee, asked if those are if I filmed some things, they were open to it, and, uh, and so I filmed myself doing some of the actual obstacles there. Which is awesome, um, and uh, submitted that, and then they called me back and told me I was casted for it. Uh, <laughs> then I had about six weeks to train, so I went back to the to the ninja gym, and uh, which is called Edge Fitness in Commerce Township, Michigan, and it's the best place in Michigan to train. Um, and uh, I got a personal coach, and I trained. I did, I did like a six week camp uh, with her, and I got ready for the uh, for the uh, for the obstacle course. Uh, and the rest is history, you know. 
Wow. Uh, for me, it just it started with a Facebook post. And then, well, no, it started uh, with a, it started with a cup of coffee. <laughs> it sounds like it started, it's, you never know where inspiration comes from. It started with a cup of coffee, and then when the opportunity presents itself, which is which is what life does, it presents you with opportunities. I, I had the decision to make, right? Am I going to follow this through? Am I going to um, am I going to step through this door to the unknown, uh, which is scary and intimidating, or am I going to sit on the couch and think about what if? Right. Um, and uh, I, I believe I made the right choice. Well, you certainly did, man. Wow, six weeks again, man. That's 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 a pretty serious uh, that's a pretty serious thing that you did there, bro. Um, Thank you. Yeah, I was watching those videos and like the big wall. You just like grab the top. I was like, this cat's just like beast mode over here, man. That was a uh, you know the big like kind of half pipe looking wall. You just like ran up it like you know like it was nothing. Yeah, crazy. Well, and then obviously, you know, that's, you know, that daring to dream, bro. I mean, that's, I'm a big fan of that. You know, you, you miss every shot you don't take. And just the fact that you just kind of dared to dream and stepped out like that, you know, kudos to you, brother, man, pat on the back. Cause you know, like you said, there's a lot of people who think this whole thing is a spectator sport and you know, it's over before you know it. And you're going to have all those, like you said, what ifs and yeah, you want to eliminate as many what ifs as possible. And you know, yeah. like I said, you're, you're, you know, I, I don't think we're here to just exist. And die. Right. You know, <laughs> Like, too many people act like they're never going to die one day. Uh, yeah. And I see it all around me, and it, it infuriates me because I've been so close to that so many times that I realize, to a, to a small part, I, to a small degree, um, how precious this thing is we have called Absolutely. life. Um, and I just want to be, because here's the thing, I ask myself, all right, well, I'm 33 now, am I going to, am I going to, do Ninja Warrior when I'm 40 or 45 or 55 or 60? No. I'm going to do it now. I'm not getting any younger. Here's an opportunity. Let's see what happens. Um, and, uh, and and you never know what's going to happen. But, but like, yeah, like you said, it's not spectator sport. Uh, we're meant to be out there. We're meant to be a service to, to one another. And we're meant to love. And we're meant to care for other people. And we're meant to be loved, too. Uh, and I get to that point by taking action. I can't think my way into that kind of mind state, I have to act my way into it. Yes. Uh, and so the the secret to life for me really boils down to one thing, and that's action. Absolutely true, bro. Absolutely true. You know, everybody has, a lot of people have their, you know, plans on paper, and, you know, a lot of times, you know, it, it, Whatever. A lot of people have their own fears, man. Fear of success, fear of failure, fear of what everyone's going to think. But at the end of the day, man, you got to you gotta make the move. Like you said, life is life is just way too fleeting and too really too awesome man like once you get out and really start doing yeah. stuff you're like man i've been sitting around it's just like like you said it can't be a spectator sport um so as a part of this i don't know when you, their affiliation with this gentleman uh happened but I, I saw online you have started doing uh taking part of what's man it's everywhere now this ddp yoga mr diamond dallas page oh yeah when did you link link up with that cat? And like you said, and everyone's saying it, it's changed your life, man. It has. You haven't felt better. Chris Jericho, same thing. Like I, especially a professional wrestler, to say I haven't felt better, all my pains are gone. That's big. Yeah, it's it's insane, um, and I'm so <laughs> great, I'm so grateful to be a part of it. Uh, it's it just just like anything else. It's, it's just it's, it's it's an opportunity that that was presented to me, and I took some action. Um, and that's what it boils what what it, what it boils down to me. I ran into DDP at a at a at a wrestling show a couple of, a couple of years ago, and I just I just came up to him, and I I didn't know if he knew me, or uh, I think we met once before, but uh, but I'm like, you know what, you know, let me get over myself and just just compliment the man because he's a big inspiration to me in terms of being successful outside of the wrestling ring. Mm-hmm. And seeing like wrestlers do that, you know, guys like Mick Foley, Cole Cabana, guys that are that built their brands and are super successful, you know, without taking chair shots in the head. I think I think it's inspiration. Yeah. Um, that entrepreneurial spirit, you know, I have it too. And uh, and so I wanted to connect with with DDP. I just I just told him I said, hey, I'm a big fan. I was a big fan, you know, since the since I was a kid. Uh, I love what you're doing, and I uh, just want to shake your hand type of type of deal. Uh, and he's like, bro, I got to get you doing the yoga. So I'm like, Hell <laughs> that yeah, was a dude. good DDP impression, dude. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah, so I'm like, hell yeah. And then to his credit, like four days later, the whole package shows up at my door. 
Oh, wow. You know, he sent me, he sent me the whole deal with the, the mats and all the DVDs for free. Um, and he sent it to me, and I'm like, all right, well, you know, what are the gods telling me right here? Right. Uh, it, 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 and, it, and it was obvious. So I, I said, let me make this commitment. And there's a 13-week program. Uh, and I'm like, I'll follow it step by step. The 13-week program. I did that. And I hated it for about the first five or six weeks. Then something switched to me. Something changed. And I'm like, and all of a sudden, I started looking forward to the workouts. And I started really enjoying. And I started loving the results and how I was feeling about myself. Um, and then I became an enthusiast. One thing led to another. I started the, uh, certif- the uh, certification program in terms of being a certified trainer, which I submitted my uh, paperwork and my videos to that last week. So hopefully... Uh, oh, wow. When this airs, yeah, hopefully when this airs, I'll be a level one certified DDP yoga trainer, the only one in the world with one leg. And well, uh, this will be this will be now, airing later this afternoon, so let's hope for that. <laughs> let's hope for that. Then. I hope yeah. I get that email. And then now, what's happened is that I'm helping uh, this woman. It's it's the whole idea of one thing leading to another, taking action, right? So now I'm helping this woman who's a double amputee, and I've developed. Uh, using PDP yoga as the foundation, I've developed a whole workout regimen for her. Uh, and she doesn't have any legs, right? And and so now we're taking these workouts that I've developed with her, and then I'm going to fly down to Atlanta in a few weeks and film with DDP. We're going to film these amputee workouts uh, and hopefully use that to uh, to form a relationship with the Wounded Warrior Project. Uh, so we have amputees, you know, coming over back, boys and girls from overseas, defending our freedoms, uh, who are getting their limbs blown off, you know. Um, but we want them to be in shape. Mm-hmm. All, all we want to do is provide them with options and access, because as an amputee, your options become very, very limited very quickly. And so uh, so hopefully it, it'll blow up and it'll be kind of a, a, a neat deal, and I could be an ambassador for that. Uh, but like I said, it was just, it was just, it was just running into DDP at a, at a wrestling show two years ago. It's turned, it's turned, it's turned into this whole thing, man. Um, and it's really, really positive and amazing. Well, I mean, all of that, you know, you took action to go up and holler at him. You took action to commit to the program. Um, you know, it's interesting just listening to you, bro. All of these different things, like I said, none of these, you being released from the WWE, that's, that wasn't a failure, man. That was all to just to prepare you for all of this that you're doing right now. And I, I had a gentleman on not too long ago. I'm not sure if you know who he is. His name is C.T. Fletcher. Um, he's a world record holding power. Yes. Student. Yeah. He, I mean, he's, he's awesome. I saw him on Instagram. Yeah, he's, a, he's an, I mean, just beyond amazingly inspirational cat as well. And like I told him, there's just, with all of just seemingly like the poison in the world, man, there's just so few people who can really say that they're transforming people's lives in such a huge way, bro. And, you know... You know, it's a kind of an emotional thing. I mean, because it's just like CT, listening to CT, he helped me out so much, man, when I was going through so much of my crap. And just, you know, seeing what you're doing, having met you, you know, my daughter's met you at the camp that you, you know, we do at Nubability, doing what you like, what you just explained, what you want to do with DDP and Wounded Warriors. That's just, that's just beautiful work, man. It's just beautiful, beautiful yeah. work, man. Well, the purpose of my life is, is to serve others. And once I realized what my purpose was, Everything falls in place, or everything fell in place for me. Yeah, you know, and I'm, I'm I'm really grateful that happened before I died. Yeah, well, I mean, there's other. I mean, obviously, you, know, you just spoke on the DDP and you know the the Wounded Warriors. Tell a little bit how you got linked up with the the, the camp that I, you know, me and my daughter and our family are affiliated with Nubability Athletics. I mean, you're, there's other uh, companies and organizations you're a part of, but this one in particular, I as well, am a part of Nubability Athletics. Man, it's a camp. Um, just to explain what it is, you know, I've, I've been going there every, all five years. We started out with like 15, 16 campers this past, a uh, couple weekends ago, we had, uh, our camp again and it was like 150, 170 kids. Um, it's a yeah. camp geared towards, um, kids with limb differences and it also includes their siblings, obviously their parents. Um, you've been there the last couple years, brother, and it's been amazing. Tell me how you got linked up with, um, with the Nubability crew. Like anything else, it's like every other story starts with a cup of coffee. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, they they emailed me three years ago and uh, asked me if I was available to come coach wrestling. 
with uh, with some little different kids. So I'm like, sure, why not? You know, the answer the answer is always yes. The answer is always yes. I'll, always yes if I can do it. Right. You know, nothing nothing has to be difficult. Nothing has to be hard. It doesn't have to be. Uh, it's either yes or no. Um, and uh, I was available, and I came, and I went down to the camp first time three years ago, and I left the camp transformed uh, because I had no idea what I was getting into. Uh, hmm. But to see these kids who were missing their limbs, missing legs, missing arms, missing a combination of both, uh, like a whole camp of them, <laughs> you know, like to see them all in one place at one time, just running around playing sports, smiling, just, you know, uh, it, I couldn't help but, like, feel like I was healing a part of me growing up as a kid growing up with the limb difference. Yeah, you know, I I just could I couldn't help but feel like somehow transformed or healed just from all of from all of these kids, and I'm like, all right, well, this is probably the best thing I've ever done, and, and I'll, I'll be back next year. Uh, and it's been three years now, and it continues to grow and just be amazing. And it's always great to see for me, like uh, the coaches come in, or even the kids do come in for the first time for their first year, uh, because. Because I was I was that person and I didn't know what to expect. They don't know what to expect, but to see them see the transformation happen, uh, that's probably the best part, you know. And uh, it, I, 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 the kids get a lot out of it too, but I think more so the parents get a lot out of it too, uh, or they, they may even get more out of it because uh, because they see the sense of community and they see they see the sense of hope that we uh, kind of uh, implant and these kids, and they see, like, you can be, like, super successful and happy and well-balanced with a limb difference, you know, as an adult. Um, and, uh, you know, we show them that's possible. And plus the kids learn a bunch of new skills and sports and things like that that, that that they can apply to in real life. So but there's, so there's a there's a micro and there's a macro kind of yeah. uh, a, a duality going on there. And it's a really special place to have to be part of it. Well, and I had the, the head, one of the heads uh, and the founder, uh, Sam Coonert, on uh, I think a day or two before the camp, and he spoke about the very th that same thing. Like the kids come in, even the parents. You know, a lot of times, you know, these parents they feel kind of alone. They don't have this sense of community with the child with a child with a limb difference. And you come to right. a camp like this, and it's like your mind is absolutely blown. The kids' minds are blown. They come in rather timid. Maybe have like Sam says, maybe their nubs in their in their pocket. But by the end of it, you know, everyone's giving pounds with their nubs. I mean, it's just like it it transforms their their psychology, if you will, like you were talking about, you know, I can do like there's nothing I can't do. I'm sitting here watching all of these kids doing these coaches doing. And it's amazing, the transformation. Like you said, it just as much happens for the parents and the coaches as the kids and the, the beautiful, like symbiotic thing that goes down. So cool to see each year. man. like I said, I've I've just been blown away, man, from the first year of this little crew of like 20 kids. till now it's like, wow. <laughs> Just wow! Yeah, it's man. so cool, man. That's awesome. Well, and again, thank thank you for being a part of it, man. And really, all of you do, Zach. I mean, seriously, I've been I've been wanting to talk to you for a minute, man. I, we can't really talk too much while I can because everyone's so busy. But I'm glad, man, you got to take this time um, to come and chat with us a little bit, brother. I want you definitely come back on, man. Once you get your certification, start working with DDP and the Wounded Warriors as that grows, man. Would love to have you on to talk about it, man. Love to help you promote that. For sure, Jeff. Thanks for uh, thanks for the interest and thanks for the platform, dude. For sure, brother. For sure, man. It has been my absolute pleasure. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to let him go because he is on the road headed to another wrestling show, I'm assuming. I'm, am I making a correct assumption there? You got a show tonight? Yeah, I'm on my way to Cleveland for Mega Wrestling. It's a fundraiser for a bunch of great kids. And, uh, you know, we're going we're gonna to share the magic of wrestling with them and hopefully uh, make a difference in their lives. Are you hearing this, ladies and gentlemen? He can't stop. He won't stop. He is Mr. Zach Gowan. He has been so gracious and taking some time. This has been It's Me Speaking to You, ladies and gentlemen, Jeffrey Wilson with the just awesome Mr. Zach Gowan, doing good things in the world, transforming lives, man. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, bro. All right, man. This has been It's Me Speaking to You, folks. You guys take care out there. Peace.